वर्णिवेशमणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनम विचि श्रीघनश्याम महाराज नीज ऑलमाइटी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड भगवान स्वामी नारायण पूज्य गुरु जी और डिवोटिस जय स्वामी नारायण टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लिसन अबाउट द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग्स फॉर लाइफ according to vachanamrut and according to the perspectives of bhagwan swami narayan we know without oxygen we cannot live just as fish cannot live without water we cannot live without oxygen oxygen is the most important thing for living beings but you just think if you have sufficient oxygen and you have no food no water is it possible for you to live no doubt for some days two days three days four days five days more than 12 days but not more than that you can live without food and water even though you have oxygen same thing is happen in our religious life oxygen is most essential for our body similarly for our religious life bhagwan's divine form is oxygen for our religious life if we want to live in satsang if we want to live as a spiritual person or a devotee we have to focus and try to behold bhagwan's form forever in our heart because this is the most important and most essential thing for every spiritual seeker now just as the bhagwan's divine form means the murti is like oxygen for our religious life you just think what can be the food and water for our religious life no for our religious life the company of bhagwan's ekantik sant as well as devotees this play role of food and water because without ekantik sant without devotees there will be no any spiritual discourses there is no katha then how can one gain some strength in spirituality just as food water gives us strength food and water strengthen our body same thing in spirituality our religious discourses from santo and company of devotees such things plays most important role in our religious life and they give us some extra strength to live in satsang that is why just as not only oxygen is required to living on this earth food water also required same thing happen in spirituality we have to focus our all senses only and only on the form of bhagwan as well as we have to keep close relation with the ekantik sant of bhagwan as well as such ekantik devotees of bhagwan 
if we have these two things meaning company of bhagwan's divine form as well as bhagwan's ekantik santo and devotees then our religious life remain healthy we remain healthy in this satsang and if we remain healthy we can we will progress in spirituality we can progress to attain our goal our goal is god realization to not attain the divine glimpses of bhagwan but to experience his divinity his divine form his divine words everything about god that is our main goal and to fulfill this goal we have to first require remain healthy and to remain healthy we have to have a company of bhagwan sekantik sant as well as devotees then and then we can easily consume oxygen in the form of bhagwan's divine murti <coughs> same thing described in the vachanamrut bhagwan says if a person has the company of the devotees of god and also has earned god's pleasure then even though he is in mrutyu lok he is still in the bar of god because one who serves the sant and earns god's favor will certainly stay near god this is what bhagwan's word bhagwan says if a person who serves the bhagwan sekantik sant and devotees then he will not an ordinary person he is the divine personality because he has a close relation and a chance to serve the santos and bhaktos and that is why in the company of good santo and bhakto even ordinary person will also become like such devotees or such santo because in the company of santo and bhakto one can easily focus his mind fruti one can easily focus all of his sense only and only on the bhagwan's divine form in the company of santo one can definitely listen from his ears the discourses and kirtans related to bhagwan even talks related to bhagwan in the company of santo and bhakto one can eat whatever the prasad of bhagwan in the company of santo and bhakto one can have only seen which is related to bhagwan's divine form are the either the form of bhagwan's ekantik santo in this way in the company of bhagwan's devotee one can easily engage all of his indriyas all of his senses in the service of bhagwan because when we stop to enjoy the worldly sense gratification f- with our sense organs our sense organs automatically engage in the bhagwan's divine form just like in the river we stop the flow of river and if we divert it in another side we can and if we develop canal we can use the water in the manner whatever we like to use of the water same thing in the company of bhagwan's devotee and bhagwan's ekantik santo worldly sensual gratification will stop and it divert on bhagwan's divine form and that's in this way if we behave like a devotees of bhagwan and ekantik sant at that time our life will become automatically change it will not remain worldly life our life become god related life and due to this we can experience we can enjoy 
द इटर्नल हैप्पीनेस इन अवर हार्ट वी हैव नो बर्डन वी हैव नो टेंशन नो ट्रेस नो एनीथिंग एल्स वी हैव ओनली इटर्नल हैप्पीनेस अनदर थिंग इज दैट only food and water cannot sufficient for a person to living oxygen is also required after attaining divine company of bhagwan sikati ekantik sant and bhagwan's devotees if we cannot focus our everything on the form of bhagwan that is also not good for us because bhagwan is the life of satsang bhagwan is the life of satsang without bhagwan how can we live just as without breathing you cannot live even though you have sufficient water you have sufficient food even though you you just sit after taking meal but if you stop breathing you cannot live similarly if we have a company of bhagwan's ekant ekantik sant and devotees they are like food and water if we stop to focus on bhagwan's murti we cannot live in this satsang on the other hand only oxygen cannot give us strength oxygen is required is most essential thing still food water is also required same thing not only bhagwan but bhagwan's ekantik ekantik sant and devotees is also essential to remain healthy in this satsang and enjoy bhagwan's eternal happiness and that is why in the vachanamrut bhagwan says we should consider these devotees the santo and understand their glory in such a manner that we understood the glory of past bhagwan sant and devotees if we understand such glory in our mind we will automatically have some feelings of affection for the santos and devotees who are present on this earth and due to this affection we can understand what the sant says and we even try to behave according to sant's word and in this way our religious life remain healthy and we experience we feel progress on the spiritual path now the important thing is that now bhagwan is oxygen for us santo bhakto they are like food water for us now the way how to consume oxygen and how to take food and water that is the important thing bhagwan is bhagwan there is no one can become like bhagwan we have attained the divine form of bhagwan in the form of bhagwan swami narayan who is the supreme god there is no one above the bhagwan bhagwan is the supreme under that bhagwan the bhagwan to whom we have already attained that bhagwan is the superior and supreme personality now under that bhagwan there are many many divine personalities even brahma vishnu and mahesh means the creator sustainer and destroyer of this cosmos they are also they act and work only according to bhagwan's order they remain and they work only according to bhagwan's command and that's why ultimately the destroyer ultimately the sustainer ultimately the creator is not the brahma vishnu and shankar but the bhagwan himself because only his command 
can due only due to his command brahma vishnu and shankar can able to do such things otherwise they cannot do anything there are so many divine perspective what we have to understand accord, according to the scriptures for bhagwan first thing is that bhagwan is supreme there is no one is able to become bhagwan third one is bhagwan even though he look like human being still bhagwan is divine bhagwan has super power he can do what the humans cannot in this way there are many many characteristics of bhagwan what we will discuss it in next time and the another thing the second point is food and water which is related to the company of bhagwan sekantik sant as well as devotees there are many things in the keeping company of bhagwan sekantik sant and devotees just like how to behave with the sant how to follow his command how to recognize a true sant how to remain alert in the company of even santo and devotees these many many things we have to understand for this second point <clears throat> now come back in first point our oxygen is bhagwan's divine form now are you breathing right now or not everybody right not only you but me also you feel you are breathing or not you feel but you have no attention on your breathing most of us we have no any attention specially pay attention for breathing that the breathing is automatically activity in our body similarly our goal is that without making more effort when we remember bhagwan's divine form forever even sleeping even eating at any time just as we cannot forget to breathing at night or even while we are eating or drinking same thing when we have such condition such situation in our life that we cannot forget the form of bhagwan even while sleeping even while eating drinking while doing any activity that is our final stage now that is our goal we have to reach up to that level but that is not possible today for everybody because we are the student in this path of liberation in this path of remembering the form of bhagwan constantly and that's why we have to do more practice we have to do more effort to remember the bhagwan's divine form <coughs> while doing any activity <coughs> if we practice to remember bhagwan's divine form according to the vachanamrut bhagwan says while one should while one is engaged himself in the singing of bhagwan's devotional songs or dhun or anything related to god at that time one should also remember bhagwan's divine form because if we remember bhagwan's form while doing any spiritual activity what is the fruit of this practice when we engage ourselves in meditation or worshiping bhagwan at that time bhagwan's divine form automatically remain in our eyes remain in our heart we can see the form <clears throat> 
So we have to start practice. First of all, we have to remember Bhagwan's divine form while doing any spiritual activities, means doing puja, doing arti, doing kirtan, while doing dandvat or pradakshina. In this way, gradually, if we have mastered this practice, remembering God in doing these activities, then after remembering while doing such activities, Bhagwan's divine form. Now, when we do another activity, the activities like uh, related to our body, like eating, drinking, sleep, not sleeping, but drinking, eating, or any other activity while bathing. In such activities, we can re we we should try to remember Bhagwan's divine form. Just like the devotees and santos, what doing? They are doing mansi puja before eating. They are offer whatever they want to eat before eating. They offer it to Bhagwan. In this way, remain contact of Bhagwan. This is the method to remember Bhagwan's divine form forever in our heart. If we master this technique. We will one day continuously, continuous engage our mind in the form of Bhagwan. Bhagwan has given an example in the Vachnamrut that a driver can also focus at the same time on many things. While driving, his one attention is also on the accelerator and brake, the another attention is on what is before means uh, what vehicle is before his car the another attention is on the side mirror what is on back side or what is <coughs> the vehicle the another his attention sometimes he may talk with the his, with his companion in this way there are while doing while driving the car, driver has many many attention on other things. Same thing while doing any particular activity, we can also focus our one attention on the Bhagwan's divine form. But if we practice it, this is the oxygen for our satsang, our inner satsang. Sometimes what happens, we have no attention of Bhagwan's divine form and still we are listening discourses of Bhagwan, we are singing his kirtan, we are even doing his arati, we are doing dunwat Bhagwan. But at the same time, we have no attention of Bhagwan's divine form. That is not our satsang. That is body without life. Even though we are doing such things, but that is meaningless. Just as without oxygen, our body <coughs> is, uh, our body cannot move anything. Uh, we cannot move. We cannot doing any activity without oxygen. Same thing without the murti of Bhagwan. Even though we are doing many activities in this satsang, but they all are like not doing at all. Just as Bhagwan says in the 22nd Vachnavada Guru, first chapter, if a person or a devotee who sings Bhagwan's Kirtan without remembering the form of Bhagwan, that is that singing is like not singing at all. That's why now from today, we should engage ourselves in, uh, in remembering the Bhagwan's divine form, not only doing this but not only taking only oxygen but to remain healthy we should also start to take food and water in the form of keeping company of Bhagwan's Ekantik Sant like Pujya Guruji and our Santos and our devotees. Ghanshyam Maharajani Jai
Oh, sorry. Okay. प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी घनश्याम महाराज निज स्वामी नारायण भगवान निज सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी और बलवेद पूज्य घनश्याम महाराज पूज्य पाद गुरु जी पूज्य संतो एंड ऑल वी डिवोटीज माई हम्बल जय स्वामी नारायण यू नो इन हाई स्कूल आफ्टर वन एंटर्स इट देर इज ऑलवेज अ फ्राइट द फ्राइट ऑफ डूइंग गुड द फ्राइट ऑफ गेटिंग अ गुड जी पी ए एंड मेनटेनिंग इट बट द मोस्ट स्केरियस्ट ईयर is junior year when you have to take the SATs now the SATs are very important why because just like how you maintained your GPA and you're maintaining it throughout the four years of high school it's as important to get a good score on the SATs no matter what why because to enter high school or to enter college to get into a very highly profiled college or whatever college you want to get into you must take the SATs but over that you must score whatever they want you to score in then only will you be eligible to enter into that college university or what not just a little brief brief you can say history on the SATs the SATs or came out in 1926 now there were two it's an acronym so there's two meanings to them uh first they named it the scholastic aptitude test but then they changed it to the scholastic assessment test pretty much the SAT is to measure the student's aptitude for higher learning meaning aptitude means acquired ability to learn higher meaning high school is a lower level than college so this is just a measurement to see that what university or what college this student will be best suited for so the SATs do this particular task by measuring that person's you can say ability to learn higher education now moreover you can say that this test is important but it's also important just like how a person in the world takes it and it's very important in the same way it's very important for particular people in religion just like how there's an SAT test examination for high schoolers there's also an SAT test or examination for satsangis or devotees well saying all in all this test is very important to us why because as a satsangi it measures our integrity what is integrity well according to dictionary.com the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles meaning good character this is what integrity means just like how the sats measure the person's ability to learn higher education the sats for satsang measure a person's integrity meaning his good moral his good characteristics his honest behavior saying that i'm reminded of a story in the time of shri ji maharaj there was a devotee by the name of gela koli so he was very very poor 
and but he was a staunch devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan uh, from the village of Limudi. Now, at that time, in the year 1813, there was a severe famine in that area of Gatiawar. Gatiawar is a region in Gujarat, so everyone started to migrate south of Gujarat. So, Gela Kohli was also in this situation, so he migrated and he started to head towards the city of Surat, east of Gujarat. So, him and his wife started to travel. And as they were traveling along the way, his wife was about a couple hundred yards away in viewable distance. And he was walking and treading the path. And he saw some kind of shiny object on the ground. That object it came out to be, after digging and cleaning it up, it came out to be an expensive gold inklet. Meaning in those days, they had inklets and it must have fell out of someone's foot. The inklet was there and it was shining. And Gelagoli saw this and he at once thought and was reminded of Bhagwan's Agna. In the Kirtan Akshana Vasivalo, there is a line where it says, Bari vastu koini hathir na jale raj, meaning do not ever pick up anyone's belongings without asking them. So, Gela remembered this Agna of Bhagwan Swaminarayan since he was a staunch devotee, all in all. So, what he did was, instead of taking the item, he actually kind of dug a little hole and actually buried the item and covered it up. Why? Because he thought that his wife is only a couple hundred yards away and she's also going to walk on the same path that he's going to walk on. And if she sees it, then she might have a desire to pick it up and take it because they were in that situation at that time of poverty. And there, it was a desperate situation. A lot of cattle died and many crops also were in that time destroyed by the severe famine. So her wife, as Gela, after burying it, left and started to walk again. His wife also encountered that same position, but she didn't notice anything. And then after she met up with him, she asked, I saw you a couple hundred yards away, and you were doing something on the ground. What was it? He asked, or he actually confessed to his wife that, I found and I saw this golden inklet, and it was actually real. But I thought that since you're behind me, you might have a desire of picking it up since we're in this situation all in all. But seeing that, her wife, his wife said at once that this is not gold, this is dirt. Meaning she did not look at gold as gold, but she looked at it as dirt. Now this was the spiritual level of his wife, but he did not know at that time. This story completely proves, and Gela Kohli and his wife definitely score a 2400 on their SATs. Why? Because first and foremost, when they, that situation was encountered, they thought of Bhagwan's Agna. After that, they executed by first, he actually buried it instead of taking it and walked on. But secondly, when his wife encountered that part and, and, and con talked to him and asked him what he was doing, she also revealed her spiritual status by saying that this is not gold, this is dirt to me. These are the two things that this story shows us that not only this was just an example of not picking up some belonging that doesn't or something that doesn't belong to us. But what I'm trying to say is our speech, our action, and our thought. This is what true integrity is. Our speech should not be something that doesn't match our actions or thoughts. Our actions, our thoughts, and our speech should be one. And that's the only way that the integrity can be really measured. And that's the only way that one can pass this spiritual SAT examination. 
Nowadays, many, many kids are scared of taking this exam. I know for sure, and I've heard many, many experiences that this exam is very difficult. And what they do is kids take, first they study on their own, those Kaplan books. And uh, then they feel confident and they take the exam. After the exam is taken, they're still really confident because they're, you know, what one wants to do is one wants to make one's mind feel that they did well. Even in reality, if they didn't, they want to suppress that. So after the score comes in and they saw that they completely bombed the exam, instead of a 2400, they got a 1000. I mean, the rule is if you write your name, you get 600 points. So I mean, this person only got another 400 points equaling 1,000, that's bad. But again, then after that person decides to take those Kaplan classes, that person ex uh, encounters her parents, tells them and confesses to them that I had a really bad exam score and now I need to take those classes because I tried studying on my own, but it completely was a failure. So as parents, dig deep because those classes are expensive. They cost about $1,500 to $2,000 a, in a month. And you only go about four times in a month. But they enroll you in these classes and you start taking the classes and those tutors teach you everything. After teaching you everything, you learn it and again you sign up for the next examination because this exam comes all in all about four to five times in a year. So after that, the exam was taken and you feel confident again. Why? Because you've taken those Kaplan classes, right? And you've paid for this much. So it's gonna be good. You know it's gonna be good. You know that you learn these new techniques from these tutors that are really useful and you used them. So you know you did well. Again, the score comes in and it's bad. This time, instead of 1,000, you get a 1,500. So 500 points higher, that's good. But the college that you're looking for, it's not good enough because it's looking for an 1800. So again, this time you take a really, really drastic approach. And not only do you take classes, but you stay up all night and day and just keep studying and studying. And finally, after taking your third examination, you know how there's a saying, third time's a charm. You get an 1800, what you need for your college. So you get it and your college sees your exam score. Also, you have a pretty stable GPA, so you get into the college you want. And there you go, you're done with those tests and you don't ever wanna take them. This was just a hypothetical situation, an example that I gave you. My principle behind this example is that, you know, at first, when we enter satsang, our integrity, meaning our character, is it might not be as good or up to the standards that Bhagwan, Puja Santo are looking for. But after doing association with saints, you start to progress and you take the exam again. You're encountered by such a situation where your integrity is tested, your moral character is tested, and you get a higher score than before. So it's good because you did the association of saints. Then after, not only do you associate with saints, but you also read more scriptures and you understand the whole perspective of satsang. So after failing the first exam, second exam of this moral integrity, you even get a higher score. And Buddha Santo are pleased by your moral character. Lastly, again, you hit a bump and it's not what you want or it's not what Buddha Santo want in us. So. Again, you work hard, you keep constant awareness that I, I can't approach, when I approach a situation, I'm gonna react like this. When I approach a situation, I'm gonna react like this. It's all in your head and you're planning it out. And finally, you do exactly what Buja Santo want you to do. And there, and there, Santos become pleased. And when Santos become pleased, then Bhagwan becomes pleased. And that's when we pass our test. 
So just like how I explained to you in the world, the process of how we take the books, we, ex we first take, study books, then we take those classes, and it's a process, and it takes time. And finally, we get the score we want, so our college accept us. In the same way, this SAT score for our religion's life, it's a process that takes time. It's not a one-month deal, but it takes years and years. But when one applies this method of good integrity, keeping awareness, then Pujya Santo will be pleased. And when that happens, then Bhagwan will be pleased. And that's when we really pass our SAT exam. So please remember this example in order to modify your character, in order to become better as a person through speech, action, and thought to please Bhagwan. Gansham Maharaj Nije Shri Patim Shri Dharam Sarvadevishwaram Bhakti Dharmatmajam Vasudevam Hare Madhavam Kesavam Gamadam Karam Swami Narayanam Nilakantham Bhaji Gansham Maharaj Nije